I am lucky because I never had to grow up. As a child, I asked questions, experimented, explored, and discovered the world around me, and then I became a scientist who asks questions, experiments, and shares my discoveries with the world. So while the tools changed from my child version to my adult version, the work is essentially the same. You might be thinking that you did not grow up to be a scientist, but science is something that we all do to the world every day. For example, what's the best way to get to work? How many times a week do you go to the grocery store? I go three times. I'm not a bad planner. I live in a small New York City apartment with a teenager. <laughs> But what I want you to consider is whether or not you use your experiences to understand your world and your options. Do you test a new route to work, time it and compare it, cook a new recipe and measure the leftovers? Then you are a scientist. And this is the same process that creates the knowledge that is captured in textbooks and shared in science classes. Yet many people start thinking science is not their thing while still in school. Originally, we thought this occurred in high school, but as researchers dug deeper, we came to appreciate that the switch from explorer to not a scientist occurred before middle school and perhaps as young as kindergarten. Yet scientific thinking is such a powerful tool for understanding ourselves and our world. So how can scientists, educators, and parents support the retention and development of this skill in children so that they carry it with them into adulthood? I propose that we let children create their own knowledge. Let's use science as a tool for them to understand that knowledge is the sum of many experiences. We'll give them real tools to investigate their real world, whether their neighborhood or their backyard, and with the support of scientists, teachers, and principals, they will do these investigations in school to understand and solve problems that benefit their communities. I introduced this approach to the Bronxville, New York school district, and this year. The、elementary, middle, and high schools came together to begin creating their own knowledge through the launch of a five-year research project. Together, they will examine the health of the Bronx River, which is in their backyard and occasionally in their basement. <laughs> Over the next five years, every kindergarten through ninth-grade student, and quite a few tenth, eleventh, and twelfth-grade students. Will be running experiments, collecting data, and sharing it with their fellow scientists. First graders will be measuring biodiversity along the river during nature walks. Fifth graders will be measuring biodiversity in the river using leaf packs to capture and count microorganisms. The lead scientists will be the students taking research as an advanced science class. They will be validating methods. Calibrating equipment using the same standards as the Environmental Protection Agency, and then teaching other students so that their classroom experiments are aligned with experts in the field. As the data is collected, it's being shared on their school website for all the students to analyze and interpret. At monthly meetings, students share and report their progress to each other. At the end of each year, they'll reflect and generate new questions. And then, when the time is right, they will publish their findings, and not in the school newspaper, but in a real science journal. Through the process of running their own science study, the students of Bronxville are learning how knowledge is formed, how science is a tool that can be wielded with power and purpose. But what really happens when students start creating their own knowledge? They realize that it's fun and messy and unpredictable when the tools don't work the way they should. They realize that the average of a group of data doesn't always tell you what really happened. And when they share and compare their work with other students, they learn that the same information can be used to answer yes or no to the question: 
is the Bronx River healthy? The students, the teachers, their families, everyone they share their experiences with are learning that knowledge is not a rock-solid object, but rather changeable, the sum of our many experiences. What I love about being a scientist is the experience of doing science. I love asking questions. I love generating answers. But even more, I love what these students are learning, that the process that shapes knowledge prepares us to understand things that we did not experience firsthand, did not predict, or for which there is no immediate or tangible evidence. And this opportunity to learn isn't limited to kindergarten through 12th grade. If you are a parent living in a small New York City apartment with a teenager, you can learn to be a food scientist or a chef. We all continue to experiment and reflect on our knowledge throughout life. So let's think of ourselves and the people around us as scientific thinkers. Because if you do not see yourself as a scientist, I want to tell you that I do. I believe we are all scientists. Thank you.